Okay, this is one of these weeks that I really enjoyed preparing for because we had such a wide variety of AI releases. I mean, they're small features, but really significant ones. All the way to more significant features inside of Perplexity, Anthropics, Claude, and even Notebook LM. And so much more stuff in between. So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of AI News You Can Use, the show that gathers all of this week's AI news that you can actually put to work today. All right, let's get into it. Okay, wait a minute. Right before the upload of this video, ChatGPT released their brand new Google competitor, ChatGPT Search. This is not a separate thing like Search GPT used to be, which by the way was quite terrible a few months ago. This is built into ChatGPT. It's built into the DNA. It's a button that you click. They have a new extension which completely eradicates Google Search from your Chrome browser. There's a few things we need to look at here, okay? So this is going to be a first look and a first impressions segment showing you what people have been saying about this and what I make of this. So first things first, who can access this? Teams and Plus users. You need a subscription right now to get ChatGPT Search. Secondly, how can you access this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. There's a brand new icon here. You can see it right here. Search the web. If you enable this, all of a sudden, this is going to act like a Google competitor, not like a LLM. It's a LLM powered Google, essentially. We could just go ahead and click one of these and right away it will search. But the essential thing we got to talk about is the following. This is essentially a perplexity clone that is built into ChatGPT, okay? And I ran a few searches to compare. This is not going to be a comprehensive review, but let me tell you, it is very, very similar to perplexity. In many ways, it's gated from sites that also perplexity cannot access. And the execution is just a bit cleaner. It's a bit more succinct. The interface is a bit better, I would say. And after having used perplexity for months, just the feel of this is a bit more concise, which I personally kind of like. And there's one more thing we need to talk about here, which is this extension, because look at that. I have a ChatGPT search extension active here. And then if you haven't downloaded it yet, there's a button here that says download the extension. I will also include a link in the video description below. This brings you to the Chrome Web Store. You can add it by clicking this button and then it's up here. And what it does is one single thing. It changes that this bar up here does not go to Google, but it goes to ChatGPT search. So if I look at something like, what is the weather like today? it will go straight into ChatGPT search. You can see it's enabled, you can see it prompted it right away, and it's aware of your IP address, so it knows where I am right now. Parnaiba, Brazil. And in some cases, I wish it did it on the first try here, but it gives you this really nice weather visual. And I see be it's because I prompted for today. So if I just remove that, it should show me this weather interface that they previewed. Yeah, there you go. And as you can see, there's a few more of these. The stocks are another one, sports news and also maps integrations straight in ChatGPT. Very similar to what you get from Google already. A few more final notes and thoughts. First of all, this is gated from many sites. So some people asked in the comment section of my latest video, how this release affects this research workflow inside of LinkedIn. Um, it doesn't at all because ChatGPT search doesn't see inside of LinkedIn, just like perplexity can. So if I do a search, like summarize this, which is one of the amazing things you can do with an LLM powered search, and then I give it the link to my LinkedIn profile, it will hallucinate something. Look, it's using search and it says a seasoned professional with extensive experience in the technology sector, positions at IBM and Microsoft, that is just not true. And this is the same result that you get from Perplexity. Here I search for the same thing and it's saying that I'm the CTO of Perplexity. I also not true. It just hallucinates something up. So you do have to watch out. You do have to double check your sources. In this case, it is a bit tricky because look, I open up the sources, there's none. And if I click this one at the top, it opens up the link and you see the correct profile, although it gave me the hallucinated results. So be wary. I think this is a fantastic thing. Perplexity has become my default for many, many searches. Actually, I would say I use it more than Google these days. I think that's an objective statement if I look at my usage over the last month. But you gotta be careful because in cases like this, it is still this helpful assistant that will give you the answer no matter what, even though it might be incorrect. But with that being said, this is amazing. It's great. I'm gonna keep the extension active here. I'm gonna be using this as my default search for the coming days and weeks, and I can report back at a later point in time how this is working for me. It's very individual, right? Everybody searches for something different. Everybody has different needs. So I would just say, try this out for yourself. See how it works. Install the extension if you have the Plus or the Teams plan. All right, on to the next point. Okay, so first up, we have ChatGPT shipping, probably the most requested feature by me, others, and a big part of the internet, quite frankly. 
it's the search across all of your chats. And if I say all of your chats, I actually mean that I tested this. You can find it up here in your chat GPT interface or by pressing command K, that would be control K on Windows. The amazing thing here, it doesn't just work like the mobile search that we had up until now, which only looked at the titles of the conversations. It also looks at all the content of the conversations dating back all the way to check this out. If I look for penguin, because writing an essay about penguins was one of the base prompts that I used to teach a lot with, you can see that it goes all the way back to the beginning of March 2023. And like this, you can find every single chat that uses the word penguin. Simple, yet very powerful. Now, what are some use cases for this? Well, first things first, you could look for your own name or somebody else's name. Every time the name comes up in a conversation, you will be able to find it like this. Secondly, also very conveniently, you could look for specific projects or clients that you might have to return to those conversations. And lastly, I would also like to highlight that you can look for specific prompts or techniques that you might be using. So I use brainstorming a lot inside of ChatGPT. Now I could go ahead and look for the word brainstorm and find every single brainstorming conversation over the course of the last 18 months. That's pretty powerful if you ask me. And again, you can use this on any prompt to return to previous versions, results, maybe rerun it with 01 now, whatever the case might be, this is fantastic. Now, along with search, there's actually two, maybe three new updates to ChatGPT this week. The first one is quickly described, so I'll start there. The advanced voice mode that was only available on mobile up until now is now apparently shipping to the desktop version. But as I said, I'm sitting in Brazil right now and I don't have it yet. I updated my version to the newest. If I was sitting back home in Portugal, I would say they're probably rolling out to you last but not sure what happened here today on october 30th they actually tweeted that this is coming to everybody but if i open my chat gpt desktop app and check for updates up here you can see that i have the newest version yeah it's in a new conversation <laughs> hold up what's going on here what are you doing kitty she was eating my shoe it sounds like you were starting a thought do you mind finishing it <laughs> yes no 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 i was looking for the advanced voice mode and i don't have it oh got it it sounds like you're looking for the voice to text feature or something similar. Right yeah. now, I'm just text based. Yeah, not really. Sorry, ChatGPT. This just doesn't work for me yet. Check for yourself, but make sure to hit that check for updates button to make sure you're on the latest version first. Okay, continuing in the vein of ChatGPT updates, the next thing I want to show you is actually a prompt that went gigaviral this week. It's creating a CIA style report on yourself inside of ChatGPT. But I have a few additional tips on how you could use this even more efficiently. So here's the exact prompt. I will copy this into the description of this video. But again, as with prompts that we've shown in previous weeks, you need to have memories turned on or you need to have your personal context inside of your custom instructions. Now, in my case, I just have my personal context in my custom instructions, so I'll turn those on. And when I paste this prompt in here, I can just run it and it will create a CIA style report of myself. As you can see, it analyzes your complete profile, including your potential vulnerabilities, leverage points or risks to yourself or society. And if I run this with all of my personal context set up in the custom instructions, it will actually create the CIA style profile on me. The person of interest identifies as a YouTube content creator specialized in generative AI and so on. I'll quickly scroll through this if you care to read it. Together, we can have a look at the conclusion of it all here. The person of interest through their expertise and community influence holds significant capabilities for both advancing and potentially disrupting AI technology discourse. It is imperative that their activity be closely monitored and managed to safeguard against any adverse outcomes that could impact public security or technological integrity. Uh, maybe a little far-fetched, but interesting nevertheless. Now, the one problem is that if you don't have custom instructions set up with your personal context, which takes some work, or the memory feature enabled through settings, personalization, memory, and then you also need to fill these memories by either answering some questions or asking ChatGPT to quiz you about yourself. Well, if neither one of those is the case, this just won't work. But I have a trick for you, and this is actually something that came up inside of our community this week. It's a very interesting personality test, GPT, that has been created by Dirk from our community. Dirk is one of the most amazing contributors we have in there, always coming up with new and creative GPTs, and I really wanted to share this one with you. Plus, thank you, Dirk, for just being amazing and always creating super unique things with tools that are available to all of us. Only thing that I say here is that it might be a little mistitled, but if you see the result, I think that might be intentional. The point is you can use this to fill your memories really well, okay? So if you go to the IQ test GPT, then simply go ahead and say you want the IQ test and it will come up with a series of questions that you can now answer. Now I would say answer these to the best of your ability and the result will be you will have one of the highest quality memory profiles that you can get. And in the end, you say something like save all the details about me to memory, you will have memories that are higher quality than 99% of people using that feature. 
Again, you gotta go through the whole thing and get the result of this IQ test, and then you save to memory. And then you can go ahead and use the CIA prompt to get a personalized CIA style analysis on yourself. That goes way more in depth than you would imagine. If you have three to five minutes, I would recommend you do this, check it out. The outcome surprised me and everybody else in the community that used this and were power users of these tools. So that says something. Next up, we have some minor but really significant updates to Notebook LM from Google. I know that a lot of people watching this channel use this product product regularly and really enjoy it too. And now for the first time, you can really customize your experience here. This is how it works. As you open a new notebook, you simply add a source as per usual. Here, I'll just add a link to this video on the channel that I recently created. It shows different ways to use the advanced voice mode, which as I mentioned, is now also available in the desktop app. But the point here is notebook LM. So what you can do now is not just generate this podcast between two subjects, but you can also customize it. So I found three different ways you could use this in a really productive manner. You can think of this just like custom instructions inside of chat. GPT, but this will affect the podcast that is created. So first things first, you could change the language of the podcast that it generates. If I say something like make the speaker speak French and generate, you will see that the resulting audio will now be translated into French. Next up, there's a preset that really goes well with the theme of this channel because you can ask it for practical real world use cases. No hype, no drama, just the ways that it can use whatever you provide it with. You could use something like this prompt right here. Talk about potential real world use cases. I want to know how this can be used by real people. This will change the tone of the entire conversation. I think you see the recurring theme here already. You can use any style, tone and voice that you could imagine in Notebook LM now. All right, next up is a really quick one. This is for all you developers out there. If you're using GitHub Copilot, now Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, the new version, just like 3.6 Sonnet, I suppose, is available inside of GitHub Copilot. This has been one of the big short comments as Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is state of the art when it comes to code generation. This is pretty much undisputed at this point. So if you're using GitHub Copilot, you can now switch on over to Sonnet 3.5 and get even higher quality assistance in your development process. And on the same note, Anthropic released a thing inside of their web app, Claude. They always keep updating this and I always highlight the significant updates just like I do with ChatGPT because I know that a lot of viewers of this channel are subscribed to this and use this even on the free plan. It's great. But what you can do now is you can enable advanced data analysis and slow Slowly but surely, we're getting all these advanced features from ChatGPT in the competition. This is one of the big ones, running a Python sandbox to execute code and perform advanced data analysis that you can sometimes use to your advantage, but you got to enable it. It's not on by default. So inside of Claude, you just go to feature preview, analysis tool, and here you turn on the analysis tool. So if you upload a CSV and say something like visualize this, ideally you add more context, yes, it will actually go ahead, analyze this with code and create a data visualization for you. You can see this sort of as an extension of the code generation. And from my initial testing, this seems to recreate everything that is possible in ChatGPT's data analysis tool, minus the interactive tables, which can be quite nice inside of ChatGPT. But there you go. Here you have the preview. You can look at the code in the back end if you want or follow up prompt to change it. Oh, and one more thing, Claude actually released a desktop app right here. So if you download this from the link in the description below, you can download the desktop app just like you can for ChatGPT now. It's the same thing as the web, but in a separate app. But that's it for Anthropic. And now let's look at the next release, which is a minor upgrade to Perplexity. And they call this Perplexity Spaces. And in our discussion with the team, we actually arrived at the conclusion that this is sort of a notebook LM if you don't want to input the sources yourself. So what I mean by this is that if you're using Perplexity, it's sort of like searching the web with the power of web search plus AI. And if you give it a search term, it just goes out there and finds different sources and summarizes and enhances it with an LLM. In the case of Notebook LM, the second part is the same, but the first part, the sources, is very different because you input all of your sources consciously and precisely. Whereas with these perplexity spaces, it goes out there and finds them. It's basically a way to organize your research on a specific topic where you're not sure what the input sources are going to be. So I'm just going to create a testing space here. I can pick the AI model. I found that usually Opus 3 works the best as it has the highest quality answers. And inside of my testing space, I could now do a few things. I could give it specific files, just like Notebook LM, where I upload a source or as per usual, I could just search the web. Now, mind you, I'm on the pro version here. This also works for the free version. And one more thing that I want to add is that you can also add custom instructions here. So just like with many other apps, you could customize this to do a specific thing or optimize for a specific outcome or give it a certain tone. All of that is possible in here. And if you do that, every single new search is going to be stored in 
these threads underneath and then new searches do not consider the threads they only consider the files that you uploaded in here and the custom instructions that you added in here so if you have a bigger research project and you know you're going to be spending maybe multiple hours or maybe even multiple days or weeks on a specific topic it might be smart to set up the custom instructions with the context that is necessary we discussed this in a community and Gerhard actually brought up that this would be excellent for a PhD thesis research because you give it some of the other papers that you're referencing maybe some of your previous research you give it extra context in the instructions and then you use the perplexity search and it's all organized in one space so there you go for perplexity power users this is a welcome addition okay next up we have polo ai Poyo or, or is it Poyo AI, Chicken AI, whatever it might be, it's a brand new video generator. And you might've guessed it, as per usual, we put this through the test and we ran our standard benchmarking images. So let's have a look at what this Chicken AI can do. We're starting with some animated characters. Okay, that's pretty good, way better than some of the competition here actually. Probably not best, but what about this anime image? Really very proactive. Okay, how about these balloons here? This is a still image that some generators actually struggle with, but this is great, a lot of camera movement. It did some weird things to this balloon right here, but okay. How about this one? This is a new one we added, Baby Yoda. Okay, just a slight camera movement, not much more. Oh, here's the tricky one that really most of them do not get right. Let's see what we get here. Wheels not moving, background looking okay. There's no real velocity, not great. Another tricky one is this desert shot. This woman always looks funky, even if it's slight. But yeah, also here, this just doesn't pass as a realistic shot. What about this man underwater? Huh, not bad. Hair looks decent. And the eyes in the beginning uh, were okay. Product shot of a burger, again, very subtle. So overall, some solid results here. Definitely not best in class in any one of these, but also not worst. I've been told that this generator really excels at generating humans, which maybe we could add a few more into our testing here the next time. But if you check out the launch post some of these videos are quite good this is a direct sora comparison and this is very compelling i mean i bet they generated this a hundred times and this is the best one but it does look good the dough chef all right overall this one is solid and if you care to see where this lands on our monthly video tool rankings just check out the link in the description below at the end of every month we look at all the releases and update these if you're not familiar these are freely available in the public area for community and we have them for video generators image generators and llms all right and to round things out this this week I kept the funnest app for last. So this is another app from Google's AI test kitchen. And if you've been following the show for a while, I always enjoy these because they're always super creative and give you a lot of manual control with AI in the background, not in the foreground. And this is another one of these. You can just DJ songs together. You prompt for different styles or elements, and then you have sliders where you can adjust how much of that sound you want. And you could even delete certain ones. So how about an Afrobeat? mixed with a loot and I make it really industrial I guess let's just keep all these settings down here as the default and hit play and you will see now we get this sort of afrobeat that is being generated live and I can up the chaos here Now that's pretty amazing. And I could make these edits as I go. So about removing the industrial and adding bagpipes. More bagpipes. Let's make the Celtic folk. change the BPM in here. You can change the key in which this happens in here. Quite a few manual options, more than I would expect. And it is all generated live. So we also featured this as the app of the week in our weekly newsletter, because this thing is completely free, a lot of fun, and something that I certainly enjoyed playing with in preparation for this episode. And I reckon you would too. All right, and that's pretty much everything I have for you this week. I hope you found something that will be useful to you here, and I will see you from a different location in the very next episode. Until then.